As well as importing text files, you can also import Excel spreadsheets into Access Database Tables. So I've got a file here called countries.xls, and that contains information about a variety of countries around the world. And we're also going to use this as the example for the searching in the next video. So I'm going to go to Access, and I'm going to choose Blank Database. I've already entered a name, Countries, and then I'm going to click Create. So just as with the text file, it's created this table that I don't really need. So I'm going to click the cross at the top right to get rid of that. And then I'm going to go to external data. And this time I'm going to choose Excel. So the first step is to navigate to the correct folder. So I'm going to click browse. And in my case, it's on the desktop and it's in the databases folder. So there it is, countries. And I'm going to import the source data into a new table in the current database, just as we did last time. Because the structure of a spreadsheet file is different from a text file, um, the, the options are slightly different. You can choose from one of your sheets. You can also choose a named range if you've got one of those. So um, the information in my country spreadsheet is on sheet one. So I've selected that. And there it is. So uh, that's looking OK. So I'm going to click Next. And then, just as we did before, I'm going to choose um, the first row contains column headings because in a spreadsheet you normally have your headings in the first row uh, whereas in a database table uh, they're kind of stored separately from the data we don't need that top row in uh, the actual table so um, that's removed then the the words country continent etc from the, the database and then I'm going to click next and just as we did um, with the text file we can go through each field in turn and we can tweak the name if we want to and we can select uh, the data type and whether it's indexed etc. With this particular database uh, I've got a, a greater variety of information so I can show you that in a bit more detail now. So country and continent are obviously text, the area is however a number. So the the number types are described in um, sort of great de greater degree of technical detail um, than um, text. So um, integer and long integer are both whole numbers. An integer stores a number up to 255 and a long integer stores a bigger whole number and similarly single and double store floating point or decimal numbers and again single stores smaller numbers double stores large stores larger numbers so the um, area I think I think they're all whole numbers so we could go for long integer there. Population is a, a smallish number so um, well, we'll leave it as double. GDP, again, that's probably a long integer. Calories uh, is a long integer. Life expectancy, well, nobody's going to live longer than 255 years, so we can go for just an ordinary integer um, for that. And then, obviously, child normality, uh, mortality, not normality. Um, mortality is also an integer that goes over 255 so let's make that a long integer literacy should only it's a percentage so that's also going to be a smaller number so let's go for integer right so that's all of the fields all of the types selected you can skip any of the fields um, if you don't want them and let's click next so um, as we said with the text video you can uh, get access to add an ID but because the primary key is something that used to be unique on every row or every record of the database. Um, we can choose an existing field in this particular case because no two countries should have the same name. So I could use country as my primary key. So we don't need to add a field there. And then next, uh, I'm going to give it a name. So again, I'm going to use the Lezinski Reddick naming convention. So TBL, the table, and then I'll just call it country because um, that's what it stores. And then I'm going to click finish. Now, it's saying index or primary key can't contain a null value. So if you're importing and something goes wrong like this, what you'll get is two tables, one containing the main set of information and another containing uh, a list of the errors. So let's click OK. Um, so again, I'm only going to do this once, so I'm not going to bother saving the steps. And we can see we've got the table country, which will contain the information we've imported from the spreadsheet. And we'll, contain, we'll get this um, second table containing import errors. So if we have a look in there, it'll tell you what row went wrong. So row 149. Now, once you know that, you can delete this table. And you can delete a table just by clicking on it and pressing delete. So in here, we know that 100, row 149 
um, is the one that contains the error. Now, they're not numbered on the left-hand side like they are in the spreadsheet, but at the bottom it does tell you what um, record we're on. And we can see that 149 is at the end, so we can click this button here and to go to the last record. So what we can see at the bottom here is actually the three records we don't need there because um, at the bottom of my Excel spreadsheet I've added some extra formulas um, for totals and averages at the bottom and it's imported those as well. So sometimes if your information in your spreadsheet isn't just a you know straightforward table you might just need to do some tidying up like I'm doing here. So I'm just going to delete those bottom three records. I'm just highlighting them using the square on the left and I'm going to press the delete key and that'll get rid of those. It's just warning me and I'll say OK. And now that information is done. I've got 147 countries worth of information in my access table and I'm going to move on to sort and search this information in the next video.